My Lords, I am grateful to have the opportunity to join this debate today. My, my reasoning will possibly become evident later. Um, in, the, in the past 40 years, I've had the good fortune to employ a number of women in senior executive positions. And I have to say, um, I've found women in business to be very focused, determined and ambitious. Indeed, in top management positions, uh, they seem to place little importance on building ego uh, and simply get on with the job in hand in a very efficient manner. Now, about two years ago, I was asked to give an interview to two lady journalists from the Daily Telegraph. The interview was supposed to be about <coughs> entrepreneurs and enterprise, young people and all that stuff. But it came to an abrupt halt when they brought up the subject of women in work, pregnancy and childcare regulations. Now, I, I found that a, a bit of sensitivity arises when someone like me speaks out on these matters. It tends to spark off a kind of knee-jerk reaction amongst some people who don't seem to hear or want to hear what I'm saying. Uh, re regretfully, uh, what was reported in that newspaper did not reflect my sentiments, so I'm grateful to the Baroness Gold in bringing this uh, debate today as I'm able to air the point I wish to make, and this time I have a uh, Hansard to fall back on for the record. <laughs> Um, my point is very simply that I believe the employment regulations for women whereby the prospective employer is not able to inquire about the interviewee's status regarding children or childcare or indeed their intention of becoming a parent are, in my opinion, counterproductive. And I think some women may agree with me on this. As things stand, regardless of the current laws and regulations, interviewers are forced to play out some kind of psychological charade where uh, they know their obligations under law but effectively, in some cases, make up their mind in advance about the prospect of employing the person sitting in front of them. Now, I say that women should be forthcoming when being interviewed, declaring their status regarding children and childcare so as to preempt uh, the unaskable questions in the mind of the interviewer, and then focus on the most important thing to explain what skills they can bring to the company and why they should be employed. I, for one, would be very impressed with a person who settled the, the matter in the outset. Uh, telling me how they're going to organise their life in order to do their job, but more importantly, how they're going to get on with the job in hand, what they're going to bring to the party, because such people would jump up in my estimation. I have to say, uh, as I've said already, my lords, I've had the pleasure of employing many women in executive positions over the years. The managing director of my French operation had three children. In fact, she had one of her children whilst employed uh, by me. She controlled that market much better than I could ever done. Um, the same could be said for another lady who ran my Hong Kong branch, a job she did so well. In fact, I seconded her to the UK to head up my manufacturing operation worldwide. And additionally, those of you who are familiar with the television programme, which I'm associated with, will know that for the last two years running, a woman has won, one of whom is now on maternity leave. Uh, she's done a very good job and, of course, the position is completely open for her when she returns. May I also add that my assistant in this program, Karen Brady, and uh, the Baroness Hayho Flint will appreciate this, um, has spent the whole of her working life uh, in football at the highest level. She was the youngest ever woman to be a public company director. Um, and has openly managed her life around her children without ever feeling the need to keep it a secret. Uh, and uh, I couldn't go without mentioning Margaret Mountford, of course, Baroness Scotland, uh, would appreciate that, uh, trust me when I tell you, she is a person. Uh, <laughs> um, my Lord, sometimes the law can be foolish and counterproductive. And I would urge women going after jobs to be bold and upfront during the interview process. And let me leave you with this final thought. While I've been talking and referring to the interviewer, um, the person most probably imprinted in your mind is a man. 
Uh, this should not be assumed. I have to tell you that this scepticism, the charade that I spoke of earlier on, is played out equally by both genders.